path. And what is the most consequential has to do with issues of war and peace. And the reason for that is you know that how you vote will mean or could mean life or death for people in your own state. And back in 2002, when I was Vermont's member of the House, I listened very, very carefully, very carefully, to what Bush and Cheney and Rumsfeld and all those guys were saying about the need to invade Iraq. I listened very carefully, and I did not believe them. I voted against the war. My website, where you go to YouTube, just check out the speech that I gave on the floor of the House. And it gives me absolutely no pride, no joy to tell you that much of what I feared would happen after the overthrow of this brutal dictator, Saddam Hussein, what would happen when you had a political vacuum and the kind of destabilization that would occur. And that's what happened. So when we talk about foreign policy, I know I hear every day, many of my uh, the other guys running for office, they're very, very tough, all these things. But do not forget that when they are being tough and their words are very, very loud, they're not talking about their kids going to war, they're talking about other people's kids. I represent in the Senate, one of the smallest states in the country, but I know, based on the many, many funerals that I attended in Vermont, the very, very heavy price that that war played on the lives of people in my state and people all over this country. Very few people know what the cost of war is about. I'm the former chairman of the Senate Veterans Committee. I've worked very hard to do our best the men and women who put their lives on the line to defend this country. Yeah. And I have learned a lot from the veterans community, from folks who fought in World War II and Korea and throughout all these wars. And what I learned about the recent wars is not just that we lost 6,700 men and women in Iraq and Afghanistan. What we also saw is 500,000 coming home with PTSD and traumatic brain injury. What we have seen are suicide rates off the charts. What we have seen is families split apart, divorce levels much too high, children terribly impacted. In my view, war must be the last resort, not the first. with a barbaric organization called ISIS. And I don't have to tell you what they believe in and what they have done. And in my view, ISIS must be destroyed. But the question is, how do we achieve that goal in a way that is smart? How do we learn the lessons of the war in Iraq? And this is what I think. I think what needs to happen is there needs to be an international coalition put together. The United States cannot and should not do it alone. Recently, in a part of the world, the Mideast, the Gulf region, where there are not many heroes, where what we see every day is worse and worse. Uh, in Jordan, the, the king there is um, King Abdullah II. 
And in a world with very few heroes, he has kind of stood out, having drawn and taken all kinds of refugees. And this is what King Abdullah recently said. I want you to hear what he said, and I'm paraphrasing him. But basically, what he said recently, he said, look, by definition, ISIS and terrorism is an international issue. Of course it is. We saw what happened in Paris. We saw what happened in San Bernardino. Bernardino. We saw what happened in Lebanon. We've seen what's happened all over the world. Of course it's an international issue. But this is what he said. He said, at the end of the day, it must be the Muslim nations themselves who destroy ISIS on the ground. Because what is involved here is a war for the soul of Islam. A war against people like ISIS or Al-Qaeda who have hijacked their religion and converted it into terrorism and intolerance in a way that we have never seen before. So I agree with King Abdullah. What I believe is the United States, the UK, France, Germany, and Russia. We've got to put aside our geopolitical differences, unite in support of Muslim troops on the ground. And finally, by the way, we may be seeing some good news. It is no secret to anybody here, no great secret, sad state of affairs. The Iraqi army has been a pathetic fighting force, but what we have seen recently is maybe some significant improvements. They have now retaken Ramadi, a big deal, with American air support. ISIS has lost 40% of the territory they controlled in Iraq in the last year. So I believe that the future there is an international coalition with Muslim troops on the ground. And I believe, and will do everything that I can to see that our young men and women in the military do not find themselves in perpetual warfare in the quagmire of the Middle East. probably too long, but let me just conclude by saying this. What this campaign is about is not just electing somebody as president. That means nothing unless we work together to transform this country. The last thing I want to do is be a president who does not accomplish what needs to happen. I cannot do it alone. not just in the campaign, I need your help the day after the election and year after year after that. Please do not tell me or tell yourselves that in this great country with our energy, our brains, our great universities, don't tell me that we cannot guarantee health care to all people as a right. Don't tell me that we cannot have a great pre-K and child care system rather than a dysfunctional one. Do not tell me that in the wealthiest country on earth that all of our people who have the desire and the ability cannot get a higher education regardless of the income of their families. Please don't tell us that the United States cannot successfully lead the world in transforming our energy system and saving this planet for our kids and our parents. Please don't tell me that at a time of massive income and wealth inequality, that we must continue to have the highest rate of childhood poverty and more people in jail than any other country on earth. I don't accept that. <laughs> so 
So if you are ready to wage a political revolution, Please bring out your friends, your families, get those people who have become cynical to get them re-involved in the political struggle. We're going to win here in Massachusetts, and we're going to win this election. Thank you all.